everyone, my name is Tiffany and this is my channel, Who's Your Handmade? Thank you so much for stopping by today. Today is another Hashtag Friday Sews, my favorite day of the week. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around. So let's start today with what I'm wearing. I am wearing Me Made. This is the Ellie and Max staycation dress. And I did do a review on this one. You guys are probably sick of seeing these dresses by now, but I'm not sick of I'm not sick of wearing them. They are so comfortable. I wear them around the house. They're just they're the ultimate dress for me. So um if you're interested in seeing this dress and the uh two others to include a mommy and me version, go over to my channel and look up my staycation review. I did a, a little bit of a lengthy review into this pattern and Ellie and Mac, the business Ellie and Mac, their website, um, all themselves. So if that interests you, you can go over there and find that video. Also, I want to say thank you so much to Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room for starting this Hashtag Friday Sews and allowing us um, to hop on board with this. So many amazing sewists are out there sharing what they're sewing on, uh, what they hope to sew on, and then a little bit about life. And that is all thanks to Jen. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pause right here for a second, you guys. <laughs> I'm not going to try to get to, what did I say in my other video? Emotional? <laughs> but I just want to say a legit thank you to Jen. Sometimes when I'm, um, you know, starting my videos and I start talking about hashtag Friday Sews, I want to jump right in. I want to breeze right over my thanks to Jen and want to jump right into what I'm sewing. And I, I mean, I want to make a point to thank her, but it's starting to become of something of like a catchphrase today in Jen's sewing room. You know, that's kind of like a catchphrase. And I just want to take a minute and, and, you know, express what I was kind of feeling the other day that, you know, she's a real person. There is a real person behind that catchphrase, if you will. <laughs> and she has an amazing channel full of amazing content. And she is just an amazing person. So I want to encourage you, if you have not went and checked out her channel, please do so. And I also wanted to share the point of why her channel was so instrumental in my sewing journey. She was one of the first people that I started watching here on YouTube. And I started tiptoeing into the world of garment sewing. What was it all about? What was all these details? Like, what is this? And she, her channel was so instrumental in just cultivating that love of sewing. And that love of sewing is what really motivates me. And really, you know, there's there's so many amazing YouTube videos out there about how to do this technique or how to do that technique or how to sew this or how to sew that. And those are amazing and I use them <laughs> daily and I'm so I'm so glad those are out there. But the videos that really touch my heart, don't get too emotional, Tiffany. <laughs> that touched my heart and stirred up those feelings inside of me were the ones that are trying to cultivate the love of sewing. And the love of sewing is so important to me. Like this, this hobby is, is not really just a hobby for me. It's not something that I just pick up and, and, you know, and don't really think anything about. It's not like, um, I mean, I could teach you, I could put videos out of how to mop a floor, <laughs> for example. I could tell you all these great techniques for how to mop your floor. I could show you what you need to use to mop your floor. But unless I am expressing my love for mopping my floor, those videos are just kind of like, they're kind of just how-tos and tutorials. They're not, I'm not trying to cultivate your love for that activity. So in my channel, I mean, yes, I'm going to try to give you some tips and tricks. And yes, I would love to, you know, include that kind of thing in my channel. But my big goal is to assist you in the cultivation of the love of sewing. I think you guys can tell how much I love it. <laughs> it's probably written all over my face. Uh, you can hear it in my voice every single time I come on here. 
it's just been, it's been in an oasis for me really, because I started sewing um, when I was on mater maternity leave. I had a baby when I was 30. That was my first child. I was living on my own for like 10 years prior. <laughs> I was doing my own thing and my world just totally flipped a switch. Like it was day and night different after that baby got here and I lost myself. And maybe, maybe you've experienced that too, that motherhood, um, the journey into motherhood is, is scary. <laughs> Like you love this baby, of course, and you, I love what she's, you know, she's made our family whole. Like, obviously I love her to pieces, but I, I had a really hard time adjusting to not the Tiffany that I was anymore. I'm Tiffany the mommy now. And I just was losing myself. I was losing my identity. And sewing just brought me back to... It brought me back to happiness. It brought me back to joy. It is. It was such an oasis, as I said, in a time of turmoil in my life. <laughs> and it wasn't like turmoil, like hardship happening. It was internal turmoil that was going on that, you know, this isn't, my life isn't about me anymore. And, you know, I was married and I had a husband and our life was, we were together, but it wasn't it wasn't about that anymore. It was about a baby that relied on me for every single thing. And um, yeah, so I rambled on about that long enough, but I just want to, just like Jen helped me, I want you guys to really feel the love of sewing that surrounds me and surrounds this little room that I have and this somewhat little it's not little <laughs> stash that I have. It's just, it's, it's my love. So anyway, let's get on to what I sewed up this week. <laughs> so I was able to sew so much this weekend. It's been an amazing weekend. Uh, we, I mentioned last weekend that the U.S. had a long weekend here, so we had Monday off, and I was just, I just took full advantage. So to show you what I completed... I first worked on this McCall's pattern. It is M8265 and I did view B there. It has the tie at the bottom and I'm gonna make the hat. I, I haven't done the hat yet. I started working on this and I have finished the gown now and I will show you that. It's absolutely precious. There is the gown. And here's the little tie at the bottom and it's just it's just darling and this fabric I purchased from Hobby Lobby it's like a really soft jersey fabric it is a bear I'm not gonna lie it's a bear to sew in <laughs> it's um it's really like slinky and soft and um just really hard to you can't iron it at all, actually. Ironing in a hem is, like, impossible. Um, so I had to really circumvent that kind of situation. And that's what made this kind of a not-so-fun sew. But I did it. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Um, a little background, if you haven't watched any of my Friday says, um, this is for a craft fair that I'm doing in November with my sister. I wanted to kind of make some custom pieces that people might be interested in. This is a size newborn, and this pattern goes from newborn to extra large. And I traced off the newborn size, and I, I kind of hate it, but I love it. <laughs> Like, I hate to love it, but I, I really do. I think they're so beautiful, so gorgeous. And some mama, new mama or mama-to-be is going to love dressing up their baby for a photo shoot in something like this. Or so I hope. So I am going to sew up more of these to try to feature in my sister and I, um, our booth. And hopefully someone will be interested in them. So this does have an overlapping shoulder kind of like baby, um, what do we call them, onesies. They have overlapping shoulders sometimes, and that is not a difficult technique. And really, this pattern is even easier because they provide, this is my traced off copy, but they provide binding pieces for you. So this is the front neck binding. So that piece goes on here. 
And then this one is the back neck binding, you know, for your back portion. And your back portion will overlap onto your front. And you do your binding before you put these two pieces together. So it's actually really, really simple. It was just the fabric. It was just, fabric is lovely to pet and hold, <laughs> but not so much fun to sew. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and, and make some more up. They're just too darling. Like someone, someone's little baby needs this. It's just too cute. So that is one thing that I accomplished. I wanted to show this pattern off because it's kind of in the same realm as that. So that pattern used, they gave you actual binding um, pieces that you could use for your neck. This pattern does not. This is Simplicity S9282. And I have made this for my daughter. I've made one dress, so one view A, and two at least of the jammies there, view B. And I'll show you what those look like. Here is the dress. I just pulled these out of her closet, so excuse any wrinkles. <laughs> so this is the dress. And caveat, I did not sew these this week. This I'm just I just pulled these out of her wardrobe so that I could compare the binding techniques because they also use the overlap shoulder. And they want you to actually use um, store-bought binding, but I made my own. So you actually have to make your binding for these, for this pattern. So that's the little dress. And then they have a little pajamas, pajama set. Again, same technique with that, those shoulders overlapping. So really, this pattern is a little more difficult because you have to make your own binding, which making binding is not that hard to do, but just kind of like an added step where I did not have to do that with this McCall's pattern. So they're really very similar, um, but, and both, both good patterns. I would suggest both of them. Just know that you do not get a binding piece with this one, but you do with this McCall's one. So you can see what's hanging over my shoulder there. I was able to get in a little me sewing time uh, this weekend. So I was working on that little baby gown and I just, I needed a brain break. <laughs> do you ever do that? Do you ever um, work in a project that's not really that difficult and just kind of a little bit of a palette cleanser to just uh, motivate you to sew a little more. And that's kind of what I needed to do. Hemming that little gown was such a pain. So I just, I needed a brain break. <laughs> so I picked up this fabric and you might recognize the fabric from Tuesday's video, which was my fall um, and winter 2022 sewing plans. I had picked up that fabric at Hobby Lobby and I had picked out some wild coordinate like color blocking choices <laughs> wasn't really sure how those were going to go over and thank you so much to everyone who commented on that video and said good choice like those those are okay <laughs> thank you that gave me the confidence to go on with my plans and color block so let me get it off the hanger real quick and we'll talk about it here it is and this is the Ellie and Mac going home sweater and it's it is term I mean it's termed a sweater but I've obviously made a shirt out of it let me take it off the hanger here it does have quite a wide neckline for a sweater and that's not something that I actually caught on to by just looking at the the pattern but it's fine um it's a little it's a little wide for my kind of taste and especially like a sweater kind of thing but it works out really good so this as I said is a double brush poly that I got at Hobby Lobby and this is a coordinating double brush poly that I got at Joann's just in the remnant bin I just had a remnant of it so I had plans to make the full sleeve out of this dot fabric but alas, when I actually laid out my pattern piece, um, this pattern piece was just too big. And you can tell that it's a raglan. I hope you can tell. <laughs> and it's a raglan sleeve. And this raglan sleeve piece was just too, way too big to fit on the remnant that I had. So I chopped up the sleeve <laughs> and I color blocked it. So I chopped the sleeve off and... Uh, 
an approximate, I thought this would be enough. I would have enough of the dot to get this portion into that and it was fine. So I went ahead and just sewed it up there. I don't know if you can tell, I top stitched on there just to kind of hold it down in there. And I was a little worried that this would make the arm too short for me, but it's actually perfect. It has these cuffs at the bottom. And this is a rib knit from Joann's. And I used that also around the neckline. And I just, I really love it. I really love this shirt. Now it is, it's double brush poly, so it's a little too warm for where we're at right now in our crazy Indiana weather. <laughs> it's kind of warmed back up, you guys. I don't know, I, you just can't keep up. So this is prepared and ready for my winter and coldish fall weather. <laughs> so I'm gonna pop a couple pictures out of me in this shirt. It turned out really, really cute. And when I saw those sleeves go together, when I, I did this part first, I did the sleeves first, I was like, yes. Those go so well together. So, you know, it might not be everybody's cup of tea. I'm sure it's not everybody's cup of tea, but it, I loved, I loved this shirt. So it turned out really well and it sews up like a dream. I did most of it on my serger. Again, if you haven't tried Ellie and Mac, here's your sign. Here's your sign. Go give it a whirl. <laughs> so that was the Ellie and Mac going home shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that I made this week. It was super, super fun. So yeah, that's what I accomplished this week. I also was able to go, um, well, actually my mother goes camping every Columbus day. So I took my little girl and we went and visited her while she was camping. And she always, on a Columbus day, she always takes all of her sewing things and she sews all kinds of fun fall kind of themed things and if you have watched my introduction video you know that my mother is a quilter and she's like a perfectionist quilter <laughs> I think in that video I said something like you know every block is square and every um, intersection meets perfectly all of it, all our points meet so um, she is that kind of quilter but and I learned to quilt from her She's an amazing, amazing quilter. She's an amazing person, just period. She's my mother and I love her. <laughs> so we went up and visited her. I didn't take any of my machines. This one is quite, you can see my machine there. She's quite hefty. So I really have to think before I haul her around. So I didn't take any machine, but I will show you what I accomplished. Some some there with mom and some over the weekend. Just Just wait for it, hold on. giant pile of burp cloth pieces. <laughs> I I just put on YouTube videos, you guys, and I just whizzed through these this weekend. I cut out all of these this weekend. There is a ton here. And just to give you an example, I think I showed a picture last week. That this is this is what they will look like. They're called contoured burp claws and look at these cute little deer so cute Christmassy themed so they're made you know to fit on your shoulder up around your neck for a more um you know contoured fit for baby so I have to get that stack sewn up before November <laughs> so wish me luck <laughs> so that kind of falls into my plans I need to work on that I need to sew up another baby gown those are my plans. My plans are kind of like ongoing for the month of October in just preparation for that craft fair. Um, but back to what mom was sewing. I want to show you this, you guys. It is so beautiful. I'm going to pop over, pop a couple pictures in of mom sewing. This is what she's working on. This pattern is called, let me check my notes so I get it right. It is called Fall Barn Quilt by Riley Blake. They have a panel. These barns are on a panel and they made this pattern to go with that, um, that panel. And it is totally free. This pattern is free. So you could like pick this up and use whatever panel you wanted with it. So beautiful. So check out those pictures of what mom is making. It's so gorgeous. It's going to be beautiful. As I said, mother is the master piece, piecer and quilter. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that was so much fun to do this weekend. Also, our house is coming along. I'm gonna pop a picture up. Um, the basement is almost completely um, dug out now and they'll be ready to concrete it and pour the concrete soon. It's just, it's just amazing. It's absolutely so amazing to see your dream start taking um, start forming into something that's reality. So the old house is completely gone. You can't even actually tell where the house is. There's a slab of concrete that we're kind of using as a reference piece because we're not real sure where the actual house is. <laughs> so yeah, this just wonderful, amazing things that are happening uh, this week, this, in this time in our lives. So before I go, I wanted to feature a couple things that I saw uh, this week this week in I think it was last week was one of them and um, that I kind of that kind of caught my eye I kind of like I subscribe to all the emails I try to you know not get too sucked into like deals and sales although y'all know that I love my sales <laughs> but um I saw a couple new patterns fly through my email and I thought I would feature them because they really stuck out to me they're just beautiful and they both of a course are dresses <laughs> So the first one is the, let me pull up a picture of it. It is the, am I going to say this wrong, you guys? Vestera dress from Itch to Stitch. This dress is so beautiful. It has such a, um, not like super retro, but kind of like vintage in like the time of like my grandma, when my grandma, my grandmother um, like when I was like 10 or, you know, growing up those small, younger years, I kind of remember grandma wearing kind of dresses like this. And so it just, that, that just kind of endeared it to my heart. And I really, I haven't purchased it yet, but I really, really want to. So this dress was super cool. They just released it. The newest itch to stitch dress. And then pop up a picture of the new pattern emporium take the chance shirt dress i love this dress i cannot tell you how much i love this dress it is gorgeous it is what i've been looking for and um i think it's what i keep looking for in like my big four patterns like make a dress like this i need to find a dress like this <laughs> And now that I've found a pattern emporium, I'm going to be picking that up at some point. It's going on my list. It just has all the amazing elements that I want to try out. Um, the tears, the button down. It has, it has a flounce sleeve option. You guys know I'm such, I'm, I'm right there with flounce sleeves. I love them. I love them. Flutter sleeves, flounce sleeves, love them. And you know, Pattern Emporium is a wonderful company. I don't know if you've ever made any of their patterns, but I made the sporty lounge skirt over the summer and I made, um, four. I've made four of those. They're so comfortable and so fun to make. I need to show you guys my collection of the sporty lounge skirt sometime because it's become an absolute staple in my summer wardrobe. But yeah, so those are the two patterns that I found this week and last week that I really, really loved. So I think that's going to do it for me. But let me, before I go, let me say thank you so much to all of my subscribers and all of my friends. I really consider you guys friends out there. I've had some new um, individuals come on board and I thank you so much for subscribing. If you have not done so, please introduce yourself down below. I would love to chat with you. And uh, yeah, you guys comment down below. I'm, I'm chatty. I will chat with you. <laughs> It makes me, it makes me so happy when people um, comment on my videos and I can chat with them. And all right, that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.